morning to everyone. Um, we are recording, so you guys will get the recording after um, probably next week um, after the class. Um, thank you for all being here. Um, Camilla and Danica really like an interactive class. Um, so I'm going to be on um, and I hope you guys interact and answer questions as well and um, really enjoy this class. This is one of my favorite ones that they do. Um, so if you have any questions, put them in the chat box. Um, otherwise, welcome Camilla and Danica. Great. Thanks, Judy. Good morning, everybody. We hope that you are um, ready to rock and roll, ready with whatever beverage is going to keep you focused. Um, and on task today, I have sparkling water. Um, so no tequila. It's too early, but it's Friday, so I won't judge you if that's your <laughs> drink of choice. Danica, um, please introduce us while I get the slides up on the screen. Awesome. So you actually may know us as the Gifting Girls. Um, Camilla and I specialize in relationship building and client retention and all of that kind of thing. Um, when we're not helping you get better at client retention, uh, Camilla and I spend a lot of time thinking about how to maintain our level of success and efficiency uh, while, frankly, doing less. Uh, we are both certified life and success coaches, clinical hypnotherapists, and work professionally as coaches in our areas of, uh, areas of expertise. So one of the things that we really wanted to do as we were thinking about like what kind of value we could bring score and what kind of value we could bring um, you all is really figuring out like how to fit all of these different types of like thinking and, and, and ways of being into different types of classes. So we wanted to bring you up something a little bit different today than we normally uh, end up focusing on. Um, because at the end of the day, what we want to basically have is a lifestyle, and I'm sure that you all uh, uh, resonate with this as well. We want to have a lifestyle we love and the ability to rest and spend time with the people we love and doing the things we love and all of these things while also still being well, badass professionals, right? Um, so for today, what we really did was we we married our passion for systems and our desire to live the kind of life we want to. And uh, we brought you this class called Balance Your Life, um, which is basically strategies and tips that allow you to live the life that you want while maintaining your status as that like high performing badass professional. So um, the first thing we're going to do today is actually going to, to get us kind of all in the mindset to really be able to reflect on our lives and our businesses. Um, and I think this, this is going to be, and it, like I said, it's going to be a little bit of a, um, like a different style of class. If you've ever seen us teach before, or you've ever like interacted with us before. So um, we really wanted to kind of like sink into like this morning and like be able to prepare ourselves to, to really kind of have a, have some moments of reflection today and really be able to like identify things that are um, going well for us and things that we want to like adjust and all of these things. So we're actually going to start with um, a short exercise and Camille is going to lead it. Yes. Great. And we got it on the screen. Awesome. Blossom. We're actually going to start um, with a bit of a guided meditation. If you've never done a meditation before, don't worry. It's not super challenging. We're not going to go for super long. We're only going to go for about three to four minutes um, just to reset a little bit of our systems. For those of you that are not on camera, um, we're just going to trust that you're doing this unless you're driving. Please do not close your eyes while you're behind the wheel. Um, you'd be surprised at why we have to give that a disclaimer, but here we are. So um, yes, um, if you're at home, feel free to get comfortable. Um, if it is more comfortable for you to close your eyes and be off camera, feel free to turn your camera off for this portion of it, um, just so that you can actually settle in and not be worried you know, about people looking at your face. Um, all good. So I will give you all a second to kind of get settled and, um, and then we'll jump into it. Okay, great. Amazing. Look, so responsive um, today. We are ready to meditate. Okay, awesome. Okay. So I'm happy to close your eyes. And the first thing that I want you to do is really just ground into wherever you're sitting, wherever you are laying down, if you're laying down. I want you to feel whatever's beneath you, whether that's the floor beneath your feet, whether it's a chair, maybe you're on your couch. I want you to feel supported and start to feel from the top of your head, all those muscles that we tend to have clenched start to release. We're gonna take three big, big deep breaths in and out. We're gonna go in for five, hold for five and out for five. We're gonna go in and hold. And out. 
And you're going to go in again. Um, out. One more time. Biggest deep breath you've ever taken in. Hold. And out. Let your shoulders drop. And shake out your neck if that's where you tend to hold a lot of your tension. And feel the rest of your body settle. Your neck, your arms, your fingertips, your hips. A lot of us, we hold our stress in our hips. Let your feet fully touch the ground if your feet are on the ground. And then I want you to imagine that you're standing on the beach. And there's sand underneath your toes and the sun, that it's perfect, not too warm, not too cold. One in the sky. And when you look to your left on the beach, you see a mirror. And you go into the mirror, up to the mirror, and you look into it, and you see yourself. And I want you to notice all the things that you appreciate about you. Maybe they're physical things, maybe you really like your hair or your smile or your laugh. Maybe they're more personality things. You like your kindness, you like your joy. You like the fact that you're there first if anybody ever needs anything. Whatever it is, I just want you to notice it. And I want you to say thank you for all the choices, all the work, every step, every day that you've taken to be right here where you are. And reflect on all the things that you're proud to have accomplished. Maybe they're this year, maybe they're this couple of years, maybe they're this lifetime. And again, I just want you to appreciate it. And then in the mirror, I want you to see your next goal, whether that's a personal goal for yourself, something that you're working on growing, something that you're working on healing, whether that's something at work, financial goal, a relational goal, whatever it is, see whatever is in your mind right now that you're working on next. And I want you to hear yourself saying, I'm coming. We're almost there. We're going to take those three same deep breaths in and out that we use to come in, to come out. And then after whatever pace you feel comfortable, open your eyes back up, come back on camera. First deep breath in, let's go. Hold. And out. Again, in, hold, out, one more time, in, and out, and then as slowly or as quickly as feels natural to you, Start to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, open your eyes, shake out your neck, come back on camera. You are in no rush. So I think it's really important. Um, and as you come out, like I said, take your time. But I think it's always really important for Danica and I to talk about why we start specifically this class. And actually, <laughs> we're considering starting all of our classes this way now. Um, because a lot of the times, especially if you've been to our classes that tend to be really high energy, really like race it, go. Um, 
it it comes as a surprise and we actually get this feedback fairly often like <laughs> that was different um that was not what i was expecting when i logged on today to work <laughs> to take a class um in our industry and the reason that we do it is because our industry all is i mean life in general the world i mean let's think about the last couple of years right like everything is intense and chaotic and go 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 and there's emergencies left and right and especially for those of you that have children or partners or the fact that all of you here are running businesses like your lives are full and our lives Danica and I know that are also very full of different things that need to be handled all at the same time everything is fighting for our attention and it's really 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 easy to get into the space of putting out fires and forgetting that at the end of the day like the first thing we need to focus on and the, the goal of our class right it is to remind you that your first priority in life always has to be yourself like you have so many people, so many things to take care of throughout the day, but there's a reason why airlines tell you, right, to put on your own oxygen mask before putting on other people's. Because it's physically impossible to take care of other people when you don't take care of yourself first and foremost. And so we know that we run around with our own gas tanks like on empty, just giving and giving and giving and giving. And sometimes that's even our favorite part of ourselves, right? But we're here to tell you and remind you that there is no rush you know, like, yes, we're here to learn and we're going to talk about great systems. <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, we really encourage you to just have a daily practice of even just spending five minutes um, and being there for yourself. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, someone shared with me that there's power in eating a meal without our phones and without anyone talking to us, just actually eating and like focusing on the sensation of food and like enjoying the food that we're so blessed to be able to have. Right. And most of us are eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like with one hand, scrolling through email with the other hand, like preparing for the day, preparing for whatever's next, or reading something or handling something or feeding a child, right? And so if even if you are like the most busy human being ever, we are just here to remind you um, that you can take two minutes out of any day, even if it's just when you're in the shower <laughs> by yourself and you're like, this, this is it, this is my only long time. Okay, great. Um, so really just focus in on yourself and remember that when we leave from a place of appreciation for ourselves and we see the things that we've done and the things that we are grateful about ourselves, we lead from a very different place um, energetically. So, Yeah. And so like Camilla was saying, basically, I mean, like one of the big reasons we want to focus on you so much here in the beginning is because we, I mean, like, like she was saying, we, we know this industry is so busy and it's really easy to feel like your business is running you rather than the other way around. So our goal here today is to really flip that script, right? Where it's you running your business instead of your business running you. Yeah, and, and really be able to reflect on why you got into this business to begin with, right? Like all of you have different reasons for being in our industry, whether you're one of our affiliate members and you're a vendor or you're an agent or you're a lender, whatever. Like there is a reason why you pick real estate, why you pick the, the job that you're in. And sometimes we get so caught up in the hustle and bustle <laughs> of daily grinds, all right, and daily life that we forget that that's the reason why we began with that, right? And for some of you, it might not be doubling your business, right? I know that that's the case for plenty of you, especially if you're new, you're like, well, my goal is just to, you know, sell as many houses as humanly possible. Okay, great. However, for some of you, that might just be, hey, how can I maintain my business? How can I have a better lifestyle? How can I spend more time with my kids since that was the reason that I got into this to begin with? It is not surprising, but it is sad for me and Danica how many people share with us that the reason that they became an agent was to have more freedom so that they could attend more activities with their family, more things at their kids' school, and then it ends up being completely the opposite. They see less of their family. They see less of their children. They're like, oh my gosh, I wish I had time to go shop on a field trip, right? So remember that when we talk about goals, it's very easy for us to immediately think of money. And that's very valid and very true. And yes, we need money to live. Absolutely. <laughs> However, today we encourage you to also think, okay, great, that can be a goal. And also, how can you streamline your business more? How can you make it more efficient? How can you make it so your business is more enjoyable at the end of the day? Because we hear it all the time, like my clients are my number one priority in life. And we really encourage you to think of your clients as something that's very important. And yes, they are the fuel of your business. And if you know Danica and I, we deeply believe that as an industry, we should focus on the people that have chosen to trust us in business, right? But at the end of the day, you are the top priority. Um, and it's sometimes, you know, really easy to forget that when everything feels life or death. And that's the way that our 
nervous systems are just set up. It's the lizard part of our brain, as Danica likes to say. Um, it's just like, hello, is there a bear? But it's with everything. <laughs> and it's very easy for notifications and everything else to turn that urgent. So um, our goal is to declutter your life and your business a little bit so that there's less on your plate. Yeah. Um, that is one of my favorite things to say, by the way, like your lizard brain, because we've been basically like, we've, we're we've evolved to make sure that we're very protected. Like our brains protect us all the time, but right now we're not necessarily getting attacked by a bear or a mountain lion or something like that every day. Like those, those dangers are a little bit different. So um, we, our goal for you today is to be able to like lower that stress and be able to take those, uh, the dangers that our brains are recording as like, oh God, a bear and be able to, I mean, we can't fly you to a beach, right? Or we can't be like, okay, take all of these things off of your plate and just relax with this Mai Tai or this mojito for a little bit. But what we can do is we can help you and uh, access that internal, like that internal sense of safety and that internal peace and really be able to help you um, take some of those stressors off your plate and be able to manage that kind of stress a little bit better. Um, because I mean, at the end of the day, stress is, stress as an agent is real, right? Burnout is high, especially, um, as this market changes, like we're seeing a lot of different types of things and that fear is really real. And those, uh, the, you know, all of those kinds of intrusive thoughts can be really, really real. So, um, basically we want to take you kind of through and, uh, through these different kinds of steps and activities today to help you move through those moments. So, um, I, at this point, if you haven't already like grabbed something to take notes with or grab like a pen or a pad of paper or something like that to, um, to kind of like take notes or like answer some of these questions or start thinking about these things, I would highly encourage you to do so because we are going to have um, a lot of interaction today or a lot of different things. Like we're going to work through these things together. So um, definitely make sure that you grab something like that so that you can start jotting down some ideas for yourself. So step one. Uh, yes. And before we get into step one, just a quick disclaimer that Dan and I frequently ask question is, are we here to just tell you to meditate? or do hypnosis or any of the other things that Danica and I do with our clients. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, yes, we think they're great tools. Sure. <laughs> but um, this class is really just to address like, what are the roots of our stressors and kind of like, where are we getting that? Um, and we can give you all kinds of different strategies, but um, just wanted to make sure that that's clear. So the first step obviously then is identifying what is what's stressing us out. So one of my favorite quotes is that in order to clean a house, we have to see the dirt. <laughs> and I think especially in this era of like really positive positivity. And sometimes what I see is, you know, kind of bordering on toxic positivity is that we think that we need to just be like chipper and like, okay, we got this. And like that the more hallmark of a successful agent is like, who can just be like, you know, this thing is on fire and this client is not actually divorced and all this is going on, but I am doing great. <laughs> and while we think absolutely like you shouldn't sit down and wallow and like, you shouldn't be weeping by your window <laughs> for 23 out of 24 hours of the day. Sure. And also um, in order to really begin to lessen our stress, we need to be able to identify what it is that's actually the root of the issue, right? So stress works the same way. So our tip here is to make sure that you're getting specific. Because again, when Danica and I talk to our coaching clients, when we work with groups of people, oftentimes we're like, hey, do you feel stressed? And the answer is yes. And then we say, okay, what's stressing you? And we either get everything as an answer, the world, or it's something super general as in work or my house. Okay, great. However, we encourage you to think a little bit deeper than that. So like, I, I understand and we understand that sometimes stress is just like overwhelming, like everything feels like it's on fire, but what specifically feels like it's on fire? Is it your family life? And then what specifically about that? Is it that you aren't seeing your kids very often? Is that you and your spouse have been you know, in this like a weird conflict standoff for the past three weeks where you have not been able to reach resolution about something and it's important and you feel like it's just weighing down every part of your life right now right? Those are two very different things. And they'll have two very different strategies for addressing that. If it's your house, okay, great. Like what about your house? Is it that you have a huge list of things that you want to get accomplished and like started projects all around your house and nothing ever gets done because you don't have time to? Because that Danica, or I would say, okay, well, you know, you could hire someone on TaskRabbit. <laughs> <laughs> you could ask a friend if they're willing to come over and have a glass of wine with you on a Friday night while you hang up your art, you know, that sort of thing. Again, it's the strategies for combating it are going to be very different depending on what the problem actually is. So the number one tip that we have for you, like if you take one thing away from what we say today is make sure that you're actually being specific and figuring out what exactly is leading to the stress. 
I like that incredibly specific use of like, if your art isn't hung up as if like, that's not what we did last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's relevant. Yeah, it's very relevant. Um, but I actually, I think that's a really good example of the, the things that like, I mean, one of the, one of the reasons why I love teaching this specific class is like, these aren't just like things that we're like pulling out of the, like the, we, we live this, like, I mean, the, this industry is challenging and we are just as stressed sometimes as all of you. And I think that one of the big things that I love about about this particular class is like these things are things that we're doing every day to like help like ourselves with our business and live the kind of lifestyle where, where we want to so I think that's a great example um because I did just move and I my art hasn't been hung up so I was stressing out about it and Camilla was like it's fine let's help <laughs> um anyway so uh so the of the three steps that we're going to talk about uh today step two is to really locate that kind of stress so stress manifests and lo manifests in lots of different ways right like it can show up in your body in lots of different ways it can show up in your life in lots of different ways and i think that like the obvious ones are really obvious but sometimes we don't really recognize that these behaviors or these actions or these things that are showing up are are, are a result of the kind of stress that we're like holding and keeping and like and like and really holding on to so like i'd like like think about the ways that um like stress really manifests in your life and you can jot down some notes things that you've noticed showing up or maybe someone else in your life has noticed showing up like maybe it's like feelings of overwhelm or emotional burnout uh, maybe it's thinking uh maybe it's like feeling like a lack of fulfillment in the work that you're doing right maybe i mean like as this market changes it can be really challenging uh to like remember why you've gotten into the business in the first place right if you're feeling that kind of lack of fulfillment if you're feeling that kind of um uh like those feelings that are shifting, it's a good idea to think about like how stress is contributing to that and like how to how to kind of manage that. Um, other things to think about are like is, <clears throat> do you find yourself with a short temper or irritable or um, getting irritated at people who are uh, normally not necessarily on that list of people who irritates you, right? Um, another important one that I think is really, uh, really common is um, finding yourself seeking like short term stimuli, right? Like the feeling of comfort and short term positive feelings from things like social media. Like, do you find yourself scrolling or getting lost in TikTok or Instagram or Facebook um, or like food or shopping? This is a big one for me, right? Like if, <laughs> if, uh, if I'm having a stressful week, like most of the time people can tell by the amount of packages that show up about one to two weeks after I'm getting, after that stressful week. So it was pretty funny. This actually happened like literally, what, three days ago, Camilla, where um, I, ha I brought in the mail and I was like, hello, yes, this is 18 different packages. Last week was a stressful one. Um, or um, I mean, like you can, I mean, you see this as well, like these kind of short-term positive feelings when you're like watching like TV or movies or like going to the gym more often or like all of these things, like whatever, however that is really manifesting for you where you're getting these kinds of um, like short-term stimuli to distract you from the stress that's actually causing the root issue. Um, and I think that's something that's a really good one to watch out for because these things are often like fun and good and, um, and you know, like when we're when we're seeking that kind of joy in general but when we're seeking it as a distraction that can be really challenging um and it can also again show up as uh it, it can be um an indicator of the problem in a different area so that's also really important to think about yes and i think it's it's also like important to know how yours might change versus your best friends or your significant others or people that you live with right like for example um this is an easy one danica and i both handle stress in books in a very different way if danica is very stressed out you can also tell because she will just send you a text on a friday morning and be like great i um after work this week i have read six books this week because she's just like, this needs to distract me, right? Whereas I'm the opposite. If I am stressed, I cannot read because I can't focus long enough to actually like intake the words on the page. So uh, it's funny because I have a, like a running reading list on my Instagram. Um, and any week that I'm stressed, I'm like, this is how you know that I'm coming out of it <laughs> because here are all the books that I finally finished when I um, was able to sit down and think. So I would also encourage you all to think about, you know, how might it show up differently because we sometimes just expect it to be the same thing across the people that we spend a lot of time with or our families. Um, so, you know, that's important as well. And then the next step is to reduce. So again, Danica and I, unfortunately, um, are not billionaires who can fly you all to a visa right now, this very moment unfortunately sadly um however <laughs> the goal is not what is to eliminate stress because life is stressful and that's you know life 
is. That's how life is going to be forever. And this is one of the things that we see a lot when people go on vacations. And again, no, no uh, shade on vacation because yeah, I also <laughs> love to go on vacay for sure. However, um, if you've ever had that feeling where you're like, okay, great, I want to go on vacation so I can forget about everything that's on fire right now. And then woo, the week passes and you come back and you're like, it's worse. <laughs> um, that's because, you know, again, the objective of that was to just like disconnect. So our goal is not to take you somewhere where nothing is impacting you because that's never going to be realistic or sustainable. You unfortunately, you can't go on a 52 week vacation where nothing ever bothers you, right? The goal is not to sit in a cabana for the rest of your life, because even though that might sound incredible right now, <laughs> chances are after a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you'd be like, okay, great. Like, um, I'd like to do something now. The goal is just to give you more tools to reduce the stress and make it easier to manage. Right. So again, the reason that Danica and I start with this part first is because because we're so like, let's go. A lot of times we focus on how we're doing things and the strategies before we even know like what we're looking for and like what our objective is. So again, reduction is the goal. Um, and it's really just preparing yourself so that you are better equipped when stressful things happen. So the next time you, you know, get into a fender bender or the next time that you totally forgot to text your spouse and there's a child waiting at school for the past 35 minutes. And they're like, um, hello, <laughs> you have a child, right? Like whatever is happening is just so that you don't react the same way that you did maybe three times ago. And you're like, this is the worst day ever. And now my week is ruined. And now I feel like terrible about myself, right? So again, reduction is the goal, not elimination. So with that in mind, <laughs> um, here's your, uh, what we're going to do to actually give you those strategies. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like Camilla said, after we, uh, after we think about the mindset a lot, we're going to introduce you to your new crowd, right? So we have five new best friends for you, uh, that are going to help you reduce your stress exponentially the more you hang out with them. Um, so let's introduce you to your new crowd. Um, your first, uh, basically your new BFF number one is delegation. So this is basically systems in your business as a form of delegation, and this can be basically used for your business as well as your personal life. So at the end of the day, you cannot and you should not do everything. Like that's just not sustainable. It's not, um, it's not a good expectation to have because what ends up happening is that you, if you have the expectation that you have to take care of and you have to function as the lead person in every single aspect of both your life and your business, uh, burnout is a high likelihood in that scenario. So um, I like to <laughs> or inevitability. Yeah, it is absolutely an inevitability. Uh, so we like to say the 80% rule. A good benchmark for delegation is doing something to 80% of the capacity that you can do it. And the hard part of this is being okay with that. So a good question to ask yourself is what do you have to do or want to do versus things that you can release from your plate and have others do for you? So like you should absolutely be doing the like highest priority things in your business, like things that nobody else can accomplish, things like speaking to your clients or connecting with your clients. Those are really, really important ones. That's something that Camilla and I will never delegate. Uh, like we will not have each other call or have someone else call our clients for us. That's just not going to be something that I'm ever going to want to release from my business because that's something that I a, enjoy doing. And it's also one of the most important things that my business is about considering my business is all about client retention and client relationships and connection. Um, but something like, I mean, like the think about things that you can release from your plate, like maybe it's some admin work, uh, from your business or something like that. Like, so for example, like I know specifically that I am really terrible at graphic design. Like, this is just not something that I have an eye for a brain for an ear for whatever. Like there's, there's like a hole in my brain when it comes to making things look nice on paper, uh, for or screen. the world it's or in just in general, it's just not there. So like that activity. And like, I, we have a lot of things that we have to make look nice for our marketing or for our business and like all of these things. So like, that is an extremely high stressor for me in my business. So immediately what I realized is that that's means, that needs to be something that I delegate. Now I'm extremely lucky because my amazing business partner is incredibly good at graphic design. So things that, for example, this PowerPoint is brought to you by <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So like, for example, one of the systems that we have in our business is that I have nothing to do with the graphic design of the way things look, but I'm very good at making things sound good. 
right? So like, that's something that I refuse to release from my business. So like Camille, when Camille and I make a class or write a letter or put together some type of like story or something like, you know, like the words on the screen of the graphic design, that's something that I'm highly involved in. Um, but the, the actual like visual aspect of it is not for me. So I absolutely am okay with delegating that and vice versa with Camilla. So basically we wanna make sure that you're figuring out what's essential and then you wanna organize the rest into workable systems for you that make sense. Now, like I said, this can be good for your business as well as your personal life. So I'm sure I'm 100% confident there are things in your personal life that you would prefer to delegate. Um, and whether that's making it like, like talking to your family or your spouse about figuring out a system that works for you. Like I know that Camilla um, and her husband have like systems specifically in their, in their family life that make things in their house better and easier. Um, or if it's, or it's like outsourcing those kinds of activities also. Like, so for example, um, I, um, I, I, uh, I, I'm me personally, like I have a back injury, so I'm disabled. So it's really hard for me sometimes to make sure that my house is clean to the level that like is actually not stressful for me. Um, so I actually hire somebody to clean my house to make sure that that is not on my plate and not something that's an active stressor. That's also physically challenging for me to do. And I actually didn't, it took me four years, far too long. It took me far too long to figure out that this was actually something that I was capable of doing and able to do. And it wasn't even like, is this something that I can afford? Is this something that I want to do? It was just like, it, there was like a, some type of block in my head that was, that was forcing me to not see that kind of solution as an option. And the second I started specifically working on that like block and being able to be like, no, this is something that would make my life better. My life got infinite, in, infinitely better. And also everybody who came over to my house, including my partner and my best friend and business partner, um, were also much more happy and or much happier and much more um, excited about sharing space with me too. So like that made a huge difference for sure. So again, business and personal, what's essential for you? What can you let go of? And I know for a fact that there's probably at least one or two people in the room that are like, well, I'm better at doing it than anybody else could do it. And I, I know people like that also. And I get, and I understand that. Like I'm a bit of a, um, like a little bit of a, like I have some control stuff that I'm working through up myself and I get that. But at the end of the day, like the idea that if you, if you try to do everything all the time, what percentage of the time would you actually be doing things at 100%? And that's where that 80% rule comes in again, right? So like, can you do some, can someone do it to 80% of the capacity that you'd be able to do it? Awesome. Have them do that thing, right? right? Cause things fall through the cracks all the time. So like, what do you want support in at the very least to like, make sure that that's getting done so that it gets done at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think it's important to notice here y'all that and, and to acknowledge, right, that everyone is going to have different capabilities as far as like, you know, financial resources and what you can afford to delegate to other things and also access. Some of you might be on teams where marketing is not something that you deal with. Some of you might, you know, have an assistant or others of you don't. The key is to actually make sure that you're utilizing what you can in order to make things flow easier and be delegated in your business and in your life, right? Because at the end of the day, like, we all have to ask help somewhere. And sometimes that can be actual people, like what Danica was mentioning with, with hiring like a cleaner and like a housekeeper. Sometimes those things can actually be like assisted. They're just like a digital assistant, right? So like, I think of the, the great example, if you know me, you know that texting is not my favorite favorite form of communication because it's so easy to get buried. And then I get stressed out, like, did I miss something? And could Apple just please let me mark things as unread? So for me, like I found that something that was really helpful was an app called Reach where I could just upload a group of people and then I could send out text, boom, boom, boom. And then I can see that that text was sent out to this group of people and wasn't, right? So again, some of this is going to be like actual person, people in your life, people that you could hire. And some of it can actually be technological. But the important part here is to, again, start with what do I need help in? And then move into like, okay, how can I delegate this? Not the other way around, because then you end up getting like 16 different tech tools you don't actually need, um, which we see a lot as well. So a great way to figure out kind of if you're like, okay, that sounds great, but I don't know. Um, a great question would be if I give you a personal assistant right now. So some of you are like, I have a business. Assistant. Okay. If I give you a personal assistant whose job it was to just follow you around and you're like, Hey, could you do this? What would you have them do first? And don't worry if it sounds far-fetched because if you're like, I would have them 
handle my kids and that's what I need. Okay, great. But just like whatever comes up first, just roll with that and write that down. And then you're going to go on from there. And again, don't worry if it's something that's really small. Another great example of like house stuff. I don't like doing the dishes. Let's just be real. It just doesn't work. So my husband and I, he does the dishes. That's it. That's the whole story. That's the whole strategy. <laughs> he does not sweep the floor because if he had to sweep the floor, we'd be crunching our whole lives, right? So like I sweep the floor, he does the dishes. This is the agreement that we have. And just like actually allow ourselves to be supported without judging. Because for a long time, I was like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? I can run a business. I can do all of these things. I'm like an incredibly competent person. And yet I look at a sink at the end of the day and I'm like, I will do anything except that, right? So coming from a place of non-judgment with ourselves is super, super important on that as well. And we hear this term all the time, right? Like work-life balance, how to create work-life balance. This is like one of those buzzwords all the time. Honestly, Danica and I hate this word, this term. Um, it causes way more stress than not because work is a big part of your life. Hello, we're all here. Your work, we're at work, <laughs> we're working. But it is not 50% or 80% and then the rest of our life gets the leftovers. So we want you to think of your life like a pie or a pizza, whatever you prefer to eat. And every aspect is getting a slice. So like work is part of your life. Your relationships are part of your life. Your family is a part of your life. Your spirituality is a part of your life. If that's important to you as a person, your health is a part of your life. And for those of you who are familiar with value coaching, which is what I specialize in, the easiest thing to think about this, right, is what matters to me. Like what's important. And then you write it down so that you can actually analyze whether or not your time and your energy is going to the things that are the most important for you. Right. So once you have it written down and you're like, okay, this is what's actually important. And like that, like what Danica talks about the things that she doesn't release from her business. Right. Like the next and equally important question then becomes like, what is not? Right. So the next question we have for you is really what can you let go of? And I know this kind, this kind of question can, can be really challenging, especially if you're someone like me and you've been living your life like you're the only one who can do everything to the standard that you can. And just for the record, up until like a couple of years ago, I did as much as I possibly could, as often as I possibly could. Oh, I know you. And I did, like let those kinds of things go. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, like I said before, like we really can't do it all and live the life that we want to. So sometimes we really do have to decide what is less, like what are less important things that we can let go of in order to focus more on the most important things. So like, for example, like I remember listening to um, a speaker at a conference one time talking about how um, he stated that his values, like he always talks about how he put his family first, right? And his kids first and like their relationships before anything else in the whole world. And then when he sat down and looked at his calendar and his schedule, he realized that like, he really wasn't spending all that much time with his family and his kids. And like, you can justify that in lots of different ways. Like, well, in order to make my family have a good life, they need to make sure that I need to make sure that I earn enough in order to like provide for them. Sure. Um, and I think that that's completely valid in it. And like that, that's a completely valid justification for that. But at the end of the day, he like looked at his schedule and he was like, this is not what I want to prioritize. So what can I let go of in order to be able to see, keep this level of support while also being able to actually interact and like actually value the things that I say that are important to me the most. And this is like, even if it's just having someone walk the dog for you, right? Or do the dishes so that you can pick your kids up from school and connect with them on the way home. Like that's really all that it, like that, like even those like little moments is really like what we're talking about here. Like, and it could be big things for you. Maybe it's like, I actually need to hire a personal assistant or a business assistant so that I can take all of these, like these hours of little things off of my desk every day so that I can leave at you know x amount like x time of the day so i can go home and not have to worry about things getting done right or maybe it's like um i don't know i don't answer client calls after 8 p.m or 7 p.m or 9 p.m or 10 p.m or whatever it is and like and i know that this is one of those things that happens because i've been in this business for long enough and i've been in sales for long enough before too or like i know how the pressure it is like what if i miss that important call you know like one of the reasons why I do what I do now rather than um, like anything else is because like I am able to have that kind of boundary where like I don't answer client calls after a specific time of day because like I know after a specific time of day like that's going to be family time for me that's going to be my time like that's not going to be like anything that is happening after 
think it's like seven for me right now. Um, anything that happens after seven o'clock for me, like I know it's going to be able to keep until eight o'clock the next morning. Like there's really, yeah. like, there's really nothing that's going to be so, so important that I'll lose it. And if there is, I'll deal with that the next morning too, you know, and like being able to have that kind of mindset was a process. So what can you really let go of, um, in order to be able to prioritize the things that you want to prioritize? Right. Which is a fantastic segue <laughs> into, uh, the next BFF, which is Danica already touched on, um, it, which is having boundaries, right? Like spending time when you're spending time and having that stop time that she mentioned, um, and making sure that you actually stick to them because we work with plenty of people and we talk to plenty of people and even ourselves in past times, I think that, um, where it's like, oh yeah, this is my stop sign, stop time. But then something comes in half an hour after and you're like, it's fine. It's just one time. But then that happens over and over and over again. So defining your boundaries with what works for you and not what works for other people is really important. Like some of you are like, I cannot imagine living a life where I don't answer a client call at 7 30 p.m great some of you are like i cannot like danica like danica cannot answer the phone for a client at 7 30 p.m because her brain at that point is like in whatever mystical word world she's reading about or watching about or whatever like that she's on her own time at that point so you will not actually get her at her best level which is important and that's why she knows kind of what works um so kind of in relation to that once you can actually make room for things and like schedule your fun time in Sharpie, as we like to say, then you got to think about the fun things, right? Like some parts of growing ourselves and improving our systems. Like we forget that these things can also like look like good and fun and enjoyable <laughs> aspects too. So the question of like, what fills your cup? Like what makes you excited, right? So if your goal is to create your business so that your kids can have a better lifestyle, are you building your business around that vision or letting your business just completely take precedent and your family lives through the cracks of time that are left over? Or do you have like an outlet? You're like, okay, cool. Like I work this schedule. And then, you know, we, we have a friend right now, Steve, whose wife and he sold their house last year. And this entire year, I'm not joking since like December 20th of last year, they have been on the road in an RV because <laughs> they decided that it was really important for them to have travel and to spend a lot of time with their kids and have their kids see all of the, like not joking, 48 States. So they've been on this like massive road trip and they figured out how to do it. And they both both run businesses and had to figure out, you know, how do we do it? Can we come back in person for these things? And can we not, but whatever it looks like for you, like you can make it happen once you actually know, like, what is the things that are exciting to you and that sound fun. Right. So, um, one of the most helpful things that Danica and I have found to kind of plan that is to have what our friend John Israel calls like micro alignments. So having a list so that you're ready. So having a list for things that take five minutes, that make you feel joyful or more relaxed or less stressed, things that take 30 minutes and then things that take an hour plus, right? So five to 10 minutes for me, I'll give you personal examples. I think that's important. That's most re relevant for me. A five minute example is playing anger groups or right now this game called two dots where you literally just connect the dots. That's it. So if I'm really just like, Oh my gosh, like I, I have a phone call that whatever, whatever's going on in my day that I'm like, I need five minutes to just not, Angry Birds it is. And I know this about myself. And then five minutes are up and then I feel better. Again, no judgment. It's just what it is. For some of you, you might, or the other one that works really well for me is to just like put on music and just like have a ridiculously like themed Elton John perhaps, or maybe Hannah Montana. I don't know, whatever I'm feeling in that moment. Um, and then I sing it and then the song's over and then I feel better, right? Uh, 30 minutes plus, like it, I usually, I, I'm a fan of legal dramas. <laughs> so like I will watch a legal drama or an episode of something and that'll kind of, you know, move me out. And then if I have an hour plus, if, or if I'm like, okay, cool. I know that I need to take the rest of the day for my brain to just not do what is happening right now. Cause I'm no longer productive. I'm just sitting here frustrated. I will often take time to just sit and go to a park or go to a, you know, an outdoor wine bar and watch, you know, children play and laugh. And then I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> there is joy in the world. Even if my day feels really, really stressful or I'll sit down and read a book. Cause for me, I like to read books like as much as I can in one sitting. Cause I don't like to stop and time stop. So that kind of gives you an idea. And that's going to look again, look very different for all of you. And that's okay because you just need to have that. And when you know 
that about yourself and when you know that about your significant other or the other people it can be really really helpful because then you can do what Danica and I do which is you is basically it's the adult version of you need a timeout (laughs) it's a stress timeout so it's like you need a timeout like what's your schedule like okay you have 35 minutes great why don't you insert here right or why don't you take a micro alignment time and when you're feeling overwhelmed or burnt out or stressed or just like everything all at once asking yourself like what can I do to support myself in the time that I have. And then you do it. And some of you, it might be when you're on your way to pick up your kids, that is, you're not going to take a client call and you're going to sing a song or just like talk through it yourself or like have an imaginary moment where you're like, okay, great. If I was in this place in the world talking to this person, I'm just going to go through this thing. And then it's, I'm going to feel better, whatever it is, like, you know, it. and why do we have a picture of mojitos on this? Well, because if you know, Danica and I, you know, we love mojitos. So if we really need like a two hour um, micro alignment, like a mojito hop, or even these days, just like going somewhere on a patio and just like having some sunshine, like that's what aligns us. Um, and some of you have been the recipients of <laughs> those kind of alignments. Um, okay, great. So now that you've kind of identified, you've, you've had boundaries and you have fun outlets, the next part is to yeah. schedule, right? Yeah. The next part is to plan, right? So like one of the things that we are, we often hear is overused is if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So we're going to kind of apply that to this and on the, along the same vein, it's really important to schedule everything, like the little things also. So we're talking about like micromanaging your planners and your calendars or whatever system you use here and scheduling like literally everything. And we're, and this is including like outlet time, like Camilla and I were just having a conversation what yesterday, the day before yesterday, where we were like, we should schedule like an hour of a, like, because what's happening right now is we work very closely together and we work t- together all day, every day. And uh, so we're like, we should schedule like an hour of like separate alone time so that we can, we can take a break and like turn our brains off and on again um, in order to be able to function at optimal levels. Um, Cause this is part of our, uh, like our, we actually have like a meeting every week where we talk about like how we can optimize and how we can effectively manage like our business partnership, our friendship, like our businesses and like how everything kind of fits together. Uh, so being able to plan those kinds of things is so important. So we're talking about like scheduling, like social media, social media time, right? Like this is like using social media as a tool without going down that rabbit hole. Um, And this could be something that you schedule every day, right? Like these are like little tiny things, right? Schedule like email response times or like work whenever, but use the, like the schedule set, like the the set, excuse me, schedule send feature. This is something that um, I know that Camilla has used so, so often where she uh, has a really great ability to be able to work like 12 hour days, uh, like once a week or something like that. Or every once in a while, she'll just be like, I'm just going to bang out everything on my to-do list for the next like two weeks in one day. And it's incredible that she's able to do that. I am not, that is not how I work, but in order to make it so that she doesn't look like she's like sending emails at midnight, <laughs> she'll use the schedule email uh, feature. She'll be able to send those out the next morning or the next day or two days from now or whenever it needs to be sent out. But like she's getting it all done and being able to plan that out so that her life is optimized and it's different for everybody. I am not capable of working 12 hour days. So I tend to work in like very efficient, like high efficiency, like chunks throughout the day where it's like one or two, two hour blocks where I'm getting like a lot done for the day in those sections. And then I do that like multiple times a week. Right. Um, and then maybe it's like not, maybe it doesn't like look like that for you. Maybe it's like a nine to five or like an eight to four. Or like, I know that my partner, for example, works like seven to two thirty, And then like, after that, it's that's like when, like when she wants to be done for the day It's like in the afternoon. So she can have the rest of the day to be her and like do whatever she wants to do. So it's really, really whatever works for you and making sure that you actually plan those little things and like schedule those things is super important. I will also mention, Camilla mentioned this um, during the outlet section that it is also really important to schedule that outlet time. She mentioned writing down those things in your planner and Sharpie right? That's actually super important. Like those are the kinds of things that we prioritize. Like for example, we're doing something super fun on Sunday. It's gonna be very fun. I'm very excited about it. And um, now it just sounds mysterious. We're going on like an adventure adventure picnic thing. It's like a riddle. It's very exciting. Uh, (laughs) We're like like that. So it's fun. (laughs) And um, so, but like that's marked in Sharpie on our, on our Sunday. Cause like no matter what else, like that's something that we're doing. Right. And like, that's something that we wanted to prioritize. And we do fun things like that a lot of the time. And we make sure that that's something that we prioritize in our schedules. Everything else kind of goes around those things. And that's kind of, that's how that planning system works. Right. 
And I know sometimes from a planning standpoint, you're like, okay, but if I don't take this call from this client at 7.30 PM when they're available, like then I might lose them as a client. There's a lot of that, like that fear. And what, what we found that works really great for the clients that we work with, because again, Danica and I work with a lot of agents um, and lenders is to actually just have upfront expectations for your clients. For example, if you always answered emails or phone calls until 10 o'clock at night, and then just suddenly the next day you're like boundaries, <laughs> And you said nothing and you just stopped, that would probably not be a great experience from the client side of things. However, for, we have clients that either have multiple businesses or perhaps they um, run their business after a nine to five. I have plenty of clients that are nurses. So they work a whole shift and then they do their client stuff on the off hours. They have really, really set in stone boundaries of like, hey, just so you know, here's when I'm available to take calls. Here's when I typically, here's my response time. Um, the focus feature on your phone. And if you're like, what are you talking about, Kamala? on your iPhone, if you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, I'm so sorry, but I don't know how to do that for you. Um, there's this little button when you like swipe up, right? It says focus and you can, it has all of these options and you can put one for sleep by the way, which turns off your notification, but you can set one up for work. It's called work focus or personal focus. And you can actually go through it. Yes, Jody loves the focus. And you can actually just share while you're waiting. And if someone texts you during that time, they get an automated text that back that says, hey, thank you so much. I'm actually in focus time right now. I'll get back to you within, you know, an hour. And this might sound really brutal, y'all, but truly, I read this in a book years ago and it changed the way that I think about it. Like if an emergency is happening, even in your world, if a situation is happening in one hour, it will still be happening. If it's that big, it doesn't end, right? And sometimes, I know it might sound counterintuitive, letting clients have some breathing time so that they are not freaking out at you for however long can be also be beneficial so that they learn to, you know, not expect that of you all the time. And again, that's different with every business, different with every client, but in general, I highly recommend implementing things like focus time um, on your phone or, you know, having that in your calendar of like, hey, here's when I talk, think about my emails. One of my clients recently was like, hey, Camilla, I am a hundred emails behind in my inbox and I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I was like, okay, great. Um, I recommend uh, going into your office and he's a broker. So he runs an office and has family. I was like, go into your office, put a sign on your door that says, I will be responding to emails from this time to this time. No one talks to me. <laughs> and then just sit there and do it. And you know what? Within one day of actually doing that, he was able to go down like more than half of it. And then he did it again for two hours the next day and then he was done. So just being able to actually plan like when we're going to do those things so that you're not standing in Safeway and you're like, oh, an email. Oh crap, I need to handle that. And then like again, plan, figure out when you're gonna do it. And then the last BFF that we have for you um, is your environment. Yeah. So the last one is your environment. Um, and really just kind of like evaluating where you're working, where your workflows are happening, like evaluating, like look at the physical and technological workspace. So can we? bring some balance to these places. Can we do some spring cleaning, even though it's fall there? Um, so like, what does your desk look like, right? What does your office look like? Where are you actually working? Like, are you working at home? Like, is your home physical space a place that actually is conducive to workflow and efficiency and productivity? Like, this is very important. Like I mentioned before, like I, I mean, I've been working from home remotely. I mean, we all kind of have, right? For the last few years. And we've kind of carved out these like remote working spaces, but like, are you working? Like, is your workspace like an actual office space? Like, is it actually going to be physically conducive to doing these things or have you like carved out a piece of your kitchen table around all of your kids stuff um or like your spouse's things or like something like that and you're like trying to work in, in, in some type of chaos um like is it set up for efficiency or and productivity so and also by the way organizing your desk is very vital making sure that things are like actually conducive to making sure that you have that kind of productivity is so so important the other thing that i would want to make sure that that i would ask yourself too is uh, making sure that your space is somewhere you appreciate being in, right? Like making sure that like the space that you're designing, that you're creating for yourself is aesthetically to your liking, is aesthetically pleasing, right? Like making sure that like, if you're a plant person, you've got plants around or like you have art that makes you feel good or like colors that make you feel good. Um, because if you're going to a place that makes you wanna like cry every day or like feels like stressed, or like chaotic or like that's bringing in that kind of energy and those kinds of feelings like that makes a huge difference and uh because i mean especially if you're like wake up in the morning you're like i don't want to do those things so going to a place you don't want to be in either is just going to make that that much harder so making sure that these kinds of things are um 
like good and like feel good for you is so, so important. And I also want to mention this for like your technological workspace as well. Like is your computer like optimized for workflow? Is your phone optimized for these kinds of things? Like are the, even if something little as like, are the icons like on your iPhone, like are your apps in a way are like organized in a way that's going to make it more conducive for, for you to like be pr productive or like do the things that you want to do. So like if social media is super important to you, cool, have that on your homepage. But if you're like, I get lost in TikTok or Instagram, have those on your last page. So it's not the first thing that you show up to every morning when you turn your phone on, right? Um, or like figure out like the different, I mean, you can do something as like, are, is the sound on, like, is the ringer on your phone something that you feel like is going to be good? Like, for example, my ringer on my, on my phone is something very loud and obnoxious so that I will answer it during work hours because I don't want to listen to that. And like, that works for me. Like that kind of, <laughs> that kind of thing works for me, but it's not necessarily, <laughs> like, it's not necessarily going to work for everybody. It's like, I know for a fact that Camilla would like go crazy if her ringer was the ringer of my phone. <laughs> if my ringer was on, I would go crazy and like lose myself. But yeah, it's super important. And y'all, you don't need to, it doesn't, what we say in all of our classes definitely applies here. It doesn't have to be super complex. It can be if you want. If you're like, okay, I'm going to renovate my whole home office. This will bring me joy and I have the time. Great. Live your best life. If you're like, my desk is a corner of my table, whatever. Okay, great. But how can that specific space bring you more joy? You could just hang a picture of your kids right above it and that could inspire something in you. So again, whatever you're actually going to do, whatever is going to be as simple or as complex as you want to make it, do that. But don't, don't worry about it looking like anybody else's or making any sense. Really quickly here on, an, on environment, I did just want to mention that sometimes the solutions to our problems are simple, but like they won't make sense to anybody else but you. For example, one of my friends, I don't have children, but um, one of my friends who's a mom, uh, she actually doesn't uh, hang up her kids' clothes anymore. This is a system that she's found works best for her. And she's like, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to wash the laundry and put it in drawers because when they go through their drawers, they do this anyways. So I'm over it. And that's what they do now. And some people are like, how are your kids looking presentable? And she's like, because I don't buy clothes that wrinkle. <laughs> like I look for fabrics that don't wrinkle. And that's what we do now. So again, does that make sense to plenty of people? No. Do some people think that that's terrible? Sure. But it works for them. And that's what's most important. Figure out what works for you. And in that, just be patient, y'all. Remember that not everything's going to happen overnight. Like you're not going to wake up tomorrow and everything's done. And you're like, oh my God, I feel incredible. I'm like living in Ibiza in my mind. Like that's not, it's not real because that's not real life. So just make sure when you make adjustments, you actually give yourself enough time to have those adjustments and to evaluate whether or not they're working and don't go on this shiny object syndrome roller coaster where you're like, oh my God, that's a great idea. Prize one thing. Like you move around one app and it doesn't work for you. And you're like, okay, never mind. Throw out the whole idea. <laughs> and then you do that over and over and over again because that's one of the fastest ways to a very hectic, unorganized, just like nothing seems to work um, cycle where you never give yourself enough time to actually see success. So um, as far as instructional time, like we look at that 11 o'clock, boom, bam. However, because we love you um, and you already know, those of you who come to our classes often, you're like, I know what the end looks like. Um, we do have a drawing for some free cut code today, just for being here in class, for deciding to spend some time working on yourself, on your business. Um, all you have to do is scan this QR code. I'm also going to put a link in the chat if that's better for you to do it. Uh, this is no purchase necessary. You don't have to buy anything from us to uh, get entered into the free giveaway. It's just because we appreciate you and we like giving away free stuff. So one of you will win a free piece of Cutco because that's obviously um, what we love to send to people. Nothing better than Cutco except free Cutco. So um, feel free to scan that or let Jody know if you have trouble with that. I'm sure she will also email out the link for those of you that are here. And then the last question that we really have for you is just what are you building, right? Like what choice are you going to make today that's going to have a massive impact on your life 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? Because it really does start today. As we always say, you can go to all the classes, read all the books, do all the things. But if you never actually uh, take the time to implement <laughs> what you're learning, nothing ever changes. So we encourage you to take some time today, um, even if it's just two minutes and decide, OK, cool, what's my first step? And maybe for some of you, it's just I need to figure out what's actually stressing me out. For others of you, it might be like, dang, like I didn't even realize that um, this isn't working for me. Maybe one of you is inspired by this laundry thing that I mentioned and you're like, that's it. <laughs> no more hanging up my kids on it. Whatever it is, um, we just encourage you to think of something that you can do today as big or as small um, as you want it to be. So get yourself in motion and make yourself feel like we are moving in the right direction. Um, Danica, throw us with our end quote. 
This is our favorite, very favorite quote to um, always finish all of our classes on. At the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or did. They will remember how you made them feel. That is, of course, Maya Angelou. And it's really true. We want to make sure that we uh, that we always leave. And like the best way to make sure that we um, are making people feel good all the time is to make sure that we feel good all the time. So, um, <laughs> so it's definitely our sappiest class. <laughs> um, it, it's, this is actually one of my favorite classes to teach because of this, because like, I'm just like, I really enjoy making people feel good. So um, I'm making myself feel good also. So that's also positive. So um, we do really want to thank you all for being here in class today. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to hang out for a little bit if that's okay, Jody. If you have any questions or like anything like that, um, definitely feel free to throw it in the chat or let us know. We'll be here for like five or six more minutes, I think. Yeah. Any burning questions? If you don't have any also, that's totally fine. Like you are not, we're not in class where I'm like, someone needs to ask a question or else no one's leaving. Like, we that's consider no about. questions and a big compliment right we will just assume that that means that this is the best class you've ever been to and you're like wow oh my god my whole life's about to change <laughs> just kidding okay. um jody do you have any questions i know sometimes you have questions at the end um no but i'm gonna stop folding my son's clothes <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i'm just gonna start a movement of mom seeing like no <laughs> I gotta tell you, I figured out that I stopped, I didn't want to hang any of my clothing like a couple years ago. And it's, it's literally like, I'm just like, I have a big dresser. It's beautiful. It's got like 11 drawers and I love it so much. And like, literally when I bought my new house, I was like, I'm going to rip out my closet and just put my dresser in there. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Yep. Yeah. You really never know what, like what the sim smallest things can have the largest impact. Uh, I guess we're on like a laundry topic. I now only do laundry once a month because I have enough clothes. Like I have enough of the same pieces that I rewear that I only do laundry once a month and it works for me. And I do one big batch and then I put it all away and then we're done for the month. And, uh, everyone thinks that it's wild because they're like, Oh my God, doesn't that stress you out to have this pile? And I'm like, not really, because at the end of the day, like that this is what works what otherwise works? then I'm just stressed out about it yeah I think one of the biggest like one of the biggest moments that like really changed the way that I think about like the, like the systems that I use to run my life and like what makes like my life feel better for me and is really like the idea that like there's no should like there's no way that things should have like should have to be or look or feel or whatever it's like literally you are different than every other person in the world so what is going to work for you specifically for example Camilla rearranged my fridge a few years ago just because she does this <laughs> that was times and I was like why are you putting things there that's not where they go and she's like this is going to be better for you there's no like where things go in a fridge it was much better well yeah like I mean at that point it was right after a back injury right so I was like Danica you have a back injury like why are you putting things at the bottom of your fridge like that makes no sense to me just put it all on the top and it needs to look this way and then she was like okay perfect and then suddenly she's like wow Camilo this feels so much better like I'm actually like in my fridge now that's amazing <laughs> can we get a fridge photo on Instagram <laughs> can I request uh, well, that We'll get you one. Right it will, yeah, it will probably look very <laughs> antithetical to all the, the answer ones, but it works. And like, that's our biggest thing, y'all, is that we always say like, do whatever is going to work for you. Mm -hmm. And like, again, there's no show, there's no whatever. Like Danica and I have very different sleep schedules. That's a big one that we didn't even touch on today because we don't have the time. We could do a whole class on sleep on its side. Or lack day. thereof. Right. right. But some of us feel like, oh my gosh, like this is when we, and whatever. Like, you know, some people were not built to wake up at five in the morning. I was. I'm not. But Danica was not. So if she woke up at five in the morning every day, um, life would not be pleasant for her. And some of us need to wake up at a certain time for the responsibilities that we have, but some of us don't. Like I have an agent friend who literally just stopped trying to wake up at this 5 a.m. to do this workout thing before work and was just like, all right, I'm just gonna wake up at eight and then do my workout and then live my life. And then suddenly they started selling more houses. And I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> it's almost like it works for you. So yeah. um, that's really the biggest thing that yeah. we have. So it sounds like, or it looks like everyone's just like, wow, we're just enjoying this dynamic. It's basically a podcast now. Well, um, I, I stopped, I had this thing about cleaning and I was like, it's so much. And one day I can't do this. It's a lot. So I kept seeing people break it up. So now we have a calendar, uh, one of those magnetic ones, that's yeah. a whiteboard thing. And I write down, we do, you know, vacuum and do floors on one day. We do bathrooms on one day. Uh, what else do we do? Uh, there's other cleaning things you got to do. Yeah. Um, but we break them up throughout the week so that you're doing a small piece of it every week and not, and not thinking you got to spend your entire Saturday or Sunday, whatever cleaning. There's a woman on TikTok who has a newsletter where she does cleaning calendars. 
And it's a reminder to clean like one part of your house that you don't think about cleaning. For example, your oven door, like that's the whole thing for one day. Or it's like your blinds. Hmm. Um, but it's incredible. Like what can happen when we actually mm -hmm. have these things? Um, so yeah, I think that it's, it's so, it, it's so important for us to actually think about ourselves and think about how we work versus how everyone else works or mm -hmm. the things that like run really well for other people. Um, and sometimes we do this even unconsciously with the, with our coworkers or our best friends or our significant others, as we expect ourselves to work in the same way. And it just, it does not happen which is, I think, you know, one of the reasons that Danica and I work as partners is because like we have differences in lots of things, including like she said, I can do a 12 hour day very comfortably and like feel great about it. And then I don't do anything for another day or two. Um, and that's the best way that my brain works, but she cannot. So, you know. Yeah. Can't do it. I've tried. Didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and I tried working well, a little bit like Danica. Oh my God. I was like losing my mind. I was like, Danica, I feel like I'm working every day. And she's like, yeah, that's part of the system. I was like, well, the system has been tried and it has. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's What's not so effective. interesting too, is like, especially if you're working on like a team or in a partnership or something like this. And this is also really important for like spouses too, and like relationships, like knowing these kinds of things about the people oh God, who yeah. spend the most time with. And what I think is so interesting is that like Camilla and I do, like, we're, I mean, like we're basically life partners at this point, right? Like we're business partners, we're best friends. We spend like she's been living at my house for a week and a half. You know what I mean? Like this is like, this is a thing that exists and we've, we've had to spend so much time like figuring out like the, the best ways to make things happen. And like, we make mistakes and we still have conflict and we still like, we're still figuring out all the time. And it's, it's a, it's a process. And it's also a never ending process too, because like yeah. you're going to change and like you're the things that you need are going to change and the things that you want in your life are going to change. And um, I think that's a really important part of it too, is like, you're not just going to like find a thing that works and stick with it for the rest of your life. Like, especially right. if you're working in partnership with somebody, like the, they're going to change also. And the things mm -hmm. that they're going to need are also like, we redid our whole system for several things like two days ago. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. We've reached the next evolution. My friend jokes with the laundry thing that once her kids are old enough to hang up their own clothes and if they want to, they can. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, I love that. Like, choice um so yeah anyways um thanks for spending some time with us today this morning y'all uh jody as always it's a pleasure to teach for score um and hopefully we have to see you soon and go have mojitos yep Bye.